This is your 20-minute podcast, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Special guest today is Dr. D. Anthony Miles. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, David. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Where uh, where are you located? I'm I'm in San Antonio, Texas, uh, the other city outside of Dallas and Houston. <laughs> <laughs> are you on the Are you on the Riverwalk? Yeah, we got the Riverwalk at Alamo. Uh, we're, we're kind of boring. We're not as sophisticated as Dallas and Houston. <laughs> oh, I, we have a good friend that lives in San Antonio, so I totally understand it. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Miles has a great education and background. He has a Ph.D. and MBA he has a, uh, in entrepreneurship and general business. He has an MBA in international business and a BBA in marketing. He's an award-winning researcher, award-winning professor, statistician, legal expert witness. That would be interesting and best-selling uh, author. And Dr. Miles is nationally known as a startup and marketing expert. So how did you get started in all this? I was I was looking at some of the research on you, and I thought, well, he's got 12 years in marketing and strategy. He's got 10 years in banking and finance. He's got 13 years in retail merchandising management, 10 years in consulting, and 11 years in research and statistics. So you got to be 56, but your picture only looks 42. Oh, you're close. I'm 53. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad I erred on the side of younger. <laughs> yeah, take, if you look at dog years, I'm probably 56. <laughs> <laughs> I totally oh, understand. Um, my story is rather interesting. Um, the reason that I have such a, 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 I guess, a mosaic of an extensive background is I got my PhD later in life. And uh, I had a guy when I was first uh, learned, getting into my career, and I immediately wanted to get my MBA right after that. And the guy said, hey, young buck. Why don't you go get some experience and then go back and get the graduate degree? So I took his advice. I got my experience in the retail industry. I spent uh, 13 or 15 years in retail, and I learned a lot about marketing and product placement in the retail industry. And then I went into the banking industry after I graduated. And then uh, I went back and uh, want to study further. And I went back and got the PhD and I got the uh, bug to start my own consulting practice because I saw a lot of opportunities that were out here. And I felt that for some reason, uh, David, when I was in the uh, job market, I just didn't fit anywhere. I always felt like I thought outside of the box. I was always an independent thinker. I didn't follow the crowd. I was more of a contrarian. And that's what started me on starting my own business. That's terrific, man. When you can when you can lock into where you want to kind of head in your in your niche or many of them, and mm-hmm. then have the confidence to take that leap of faith, that's uh, that must have been quite a quite a moment for you. Oh, absolutely. It was a uh, sometimes uh, we have a calling and we don't heed the calling, and then sometimes we get forced to heeding our calling. And uh, I got the I got the rude awakening of my life. I got downsized from my job when I was at the bank, and I said to myself because my second daughter was just born. I said, I'm not ever going to let somebody decide how much money I'm going to make and when I'm going to make money. I said, I just, every entrepreneur has that epiphany in their life. And I had my, I had my moment of clarity and that's what happened with me. Well, the same thing exactly happened with me. I had a corporate job uh, in marketing with a large automotive group and Uh um, they uh, came in and fired me over a cup of coffee. That was pretty special. And, uh, wow. And so I talked, in fact, when we got done with a cup of coffee, I walked out and called my wife and I said, I think we need to pray about this. And and so we did. Mm -hmm. And we decided to take a leap of faith when the last day on my job was April 30th, 2008. Mm -hmm. No, 7, 2007. Uh And uh, so we took a leap of faith and I started my own business the very next day and I haven't looked back. I tell you, it's it's uh, everybody gets the bug. Uh, sometimes you have compulsion entrepreneurship <laughs> where you're first to be an entrepreneur, but that's a that's a tale that I think a lot of uh, your listeners probably can relate to. Uh, it's nothing like a man trying to take care of his family, right? And all of a sudden, somebody tells you that you no longer need it, and we're gonna go in this direction. And uh, I think that. That needed to happen to me. It probably needed to happen to you because so many opportunities have happened to me since having my own business. And, you know, when you're an employee, 
you don't you don't you're you're a, you're a resource right and you don't people don't interview you on the radio people don't call you in to speak and you get a honorary for speaking right when you're an employee you think like an employee you act like an employee you only do that job then you go home and then you go back the next day and i i, I don't think i've ever fit that mold and you i see a lot of similarities between us yeah absolutely right and i'm wondering i'm i mean i'm thinking there's got to be two or three or four, maybe a hundred, who knows, that are listening to this and are going, mm-hmm. damn, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this employee mm-hmm. thing. I want to take a leap of faith and do this entrepreneur thing. And so when you, when you help people start mm-hmm. in small and medium businesses, what, how do you do that? How do you work with them? Well, uh, I'm a business advisor to high net worth individuals, which is lottery winners and professional athletes and other high end people. And uh, what I do is I give them the good, the bad, the ugly. And I, and, you know, obviously they bring me in for my uh, expertise to uh, give them some uh, business advice. And I say, look, right. I wouldn't do that business, one, because I, like to, I need to see something from the people who ask you to jump into this business. And if it's uh, a guy's friend and a guy has no experience, to me, that's a red flag. Yeah. And I think a lot of us... Whether you want to admit this or not, we're victims of the people that we hang around, our circle. No question Some about the, it, yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I've been a victim and you've been a victim. Yes, and sir. Sometimes the people that we know may not be the best people to get us to the next level. I mean, we you are who we surround ourselves with. Oh, absolutely. Having friends is like a diet. The people that you have around you is an is, is a, is a indicator of the type of diet you have, the type of thinking that flows through you. If you're around people that are criminals, you're most likely going to be involved in criminal activities. If you're around people that are always talking about the next business deal and how to make money on this next deal and talking about buying a franchise, well, that's that's got to be some type of cross-pollinization to you and some influence on you. So you want to always surround yourself. You at least have a mentor and surround, surround yourself with people that want to see you do well and people want to see you that'll push you. I mean, you don't want a yes, man, but you want somebody to say, hey, you need to rethink that. You don't want to do that. You want to do this. Like I was telling uh, one of my students, uh, me and him went to the movies yesterday. You'll find this funny, David. We went, I took him to the movies because I wanted him to see that movie that the South called The Founder, Bob McDonald. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that yet. You got to see that movie. Oh, <laughs> and he was so into the movie. He's an entrepreneur as well. And I said, what did you learn from that? He said, I don't know, Dr. Miles. Uh, that was uh, that was something else. I said, well, when you have your business, you got to protect your intellectual property. You got to also look at you got you also have to have a strategic model in mind for future expansion about what you're trying to do. You always got to have strategic planning. Uh, you know, if you can't do it, get somebody to help you. You have you got to be looking forward. Yeah, you got to be looking ahead all the time, don't you? Absolutely, because you know, right now, business. I think it's harder to start a business now than it ever has been in a certain aspect. Because I think this is the, we're living in the age of entrepreneurship. Yeah, the corporate the corporate rod isn't cutting it anymore, and and uh, universities are starting to pick up on this now. This is one of the complaints. Well, I was a university professor. You should be teaching entrepreneurship along with marketing, finance, accounting. Because all we're doing is creating employees. And one of the things I always had a problem with the colleges and universities was this. They're set up to create employees. You go get a college degree and then you go get a job, you graduate, and then you're out in the workforce. I always said to myself, there's got to be something different than, than to do this. Maybe I don't want to be an employee, you know? And I, and yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. There are college graduates coming out every year. And the jobs are getting less and less and less. So you got to teach people entrepreneurship. That's the only that's the only savior that I can see right now. So if somebody and that makes all the sense in the world to me, I I used to live in a manage, manage a group of radio stations years ago, and mm-hmm. and the university in town there would send over their students to have me interview them and maybe hire them as an intern or whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I would sit there and look at them and they would say, well, what's your degree? And I said, I have no degree. Uh, Hard I, knocks, huh? Yeah. I said, <laughs> my deal is attitude and aptitude. If you, if you got the attitude and the aptitude, I want to hire you. I don't care about your college degree. I like you so much. We, we definitely got to chat. I love what you just said because you got to have three literacies in a workforce. And it doesn't mean college degree either. You got to be literate. 
You got to be able to know how to read. You got to be numerate. You got to know how to add, subtract, and divide. You got to be computerate. You got to be able to know how to work on a computer. Yep. And if you don't have those three literacies, you're going to get you. It's not going to be a rosy picture for you and a great outlook for you finding a job. And we're getting students who can't write. They are so busy typing using text speak that they don't know how to write a coherent sentence. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, it's, it's getting bad. It's getting really bad. I know when I, uh, my grandkids are, are are not even being taught cursive anymore. Can you believe that? Oh, no. wow. <laughs> I never thought I'd see that. <laughs> I never thought I'd see that day, and I'm going, seriously? Yeah, yes. Papa, we're wow. doing this. So that I love your literacies, course. man. That is that is so spot on. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and for anybody who's considering not being an employee any longer, you really have to evaluate those three literacies. You got to evaluate the Mm -hmm. people that you surround yourself with Mm -hmm. and you got to be willing to take a leap of faith when the time's right, huh? Absolutely. And, uh, Everybody gets their call in a different life. And, and and I'm like this, David. I don't judge people. You know what I say when I see somebody that's not there yet? I say they're in a stage of development. Yeah. Okay? I don't have a right to judge somebody because I don't know their story. I don't know their struggles. Right. That guy might be walking around raggedy. He may have a multi-million dollar business. He doesn't want to attract attention to himself. Yeah, that's right. So, so I treat everybody the same. And if I see somebody that needs help, I mean, I don't want to like give away the store, but I try to help people. And I always have that attitude. When I see somebody that's not there yet, I always say they're in a stage of development. How dare you talk about someone because of the way they're dressed? There's a multi-million dollar, inside, multi-million dollar entrepreneur inside of everybody. Absolutely right. I, I remember years ago, I, I'd walk into my insurance office to mm-hmm. check on something. I don't even remember. And there was a good old boy, farmer guy, mm-hmm. stereotypical with a bib up, overalls, a cowboy hat, the piece of straw hanging out of his mouth, oh, wow. the whole thing, you know? Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> so he finished his conversation and he walked out and I said, now that was an interesting man. Mm-hmm. She says, you have no idea. He's a multimillionaire. There you go. And I believe... Every entrepreneur should have this book called A Millionaire Next Door because we've been fooled about people that are really that are on, that are uh, millionaires. And that's really a distortion of reality. Yeah. People that have money don't spend don't spend money buying twelve hundred dollar Armani suits. People that are millionaires try to keep stay being a millionaire by being frugal. Yeah. OK. Millionaires don't buy brand new cars every year. They buy used cars. Yep. So, you know, your, your habits and all of those different things will lead you to being the type of entrepreneur that you want to be and also being wealthy. And what we don't, what they don't teach in school is this, because I was a university professor and I can say this, what they don't teach you is how to be self-employed and how to be self-sustaining. There's got to be more to life than just going to school and getting a degree and getting a job than retiring. No question. What's wrong with that picture? Well, and even if they even if they do have that mindset, mm-hmm. I mean, there is no way that you're going to stay with a company for 30 years and get a gold watch. I mean, that's I totally just not agree. A, you know uh, what I mean? You, yeah, absolutely. You ever heard of just in time inventory? Yeah. Where you bring an inventory, you sell it, get rid of. Well, that transferred into the workplace. Now you got just in time employment. You only need it when you're needed. That's why you're seeing the rise and the influx and more uh, the uh, emerging of uh, of uh, temp temp agencies. Oh, for sure, yeah. They only want you for yeah. Uh, they don't want you for a short period of time on a project, and then seeing you on the way, they cutting overhead. I mean, some businesses just you know they don't see why they need employees. They can run a business on a core staff of maybe ten people. They don't need employees. Yeah. So they may have subcontractors. So what you have to do, and I'm telling all the kiddies out here listening to this, the key word now is multiple streams of income. Always have multiple streams of income. Don't Having a job is like having one client. And when that client is tired of you and tired of the engagement, they will let you go. And you're going to go from one to zero. You don't want to go back to zero. You always want to have multiple streams of income. If you have, like you, you have your radio show, then you got your speaking engagement arm of your business. Do you have uh, your consulting part of your business? The key word now is multiple streams of income. No question about it. I, I preach that. I don't know how many times. In fact, I did a, an interview with a good friend of mine yesterday. And, yes. And we had the exact same con- conversation because uh-huh. without multiple streams of revenue, you can't make it in this world mm-hmm. anymore. I don't care what you're doing. 
It, it, you, you really can't. And that, that you remember that guy who, who got who got fired on Friday and he's back in the grind on Monday and they don't want to pay you what you were making. Right. Even though no matter how many degrees you had, I mean, the, the, the college degree is so devalued now with the uh, with, you know, with online education is is made to college degree a commodity. And a guy who gets a certification may make more money than a guy getting a college degree. I mean, this I never thought I would see this reversal. Right. Like in my situation is a little bit different. I got my my PhD because I wanted to build my consulting practice. Right. Okay. I didn't get it just because I wanted to get a faculty job, but it would have been nice to have a faculty job. But you know what? I would eventually would have left. However, why don't I just start off at the gate and build up my business and incorporate my business and build up my client base and I'll make money in the president of the university. Absolutely. I really, we really have a stigma in this country of call employeeism, being an employee. And when you're an employee, and I know, I, I think I've heard Robert Kiyosaki say this, the God of a rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. He said, when you're an employee, you're in a constant state of fear. You're worried about losing your job because when you make a mistake, they fire you. It is so easy to get fired from a job. Like I live in Texas. They have something called at-will employment. That means they don't have to have a reason to fire you. They could fire you because they feel like it all. They're having a budget crunch in a quarter. Yep. So uh, an employee is in, con- in a constant state of fear. And when you're in a constant state of fear, you don't perform well. They call that, I don't know if you heard Sean Diddy Cobb say this, they call it that scared money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That is a true story there, man. Yeah. So wow. you got people that are afraid, you know, every day you're like, a, like, well, I heard a guy say this. You're like a duck every day waiting to get shot. You just don't know what day is coming. <laughs> That's what an employee is. You don't see the blind and here it comes. There you go. And normally when they fire you, yep. they're going to fire you. They don't care if you just bought a house. They don't care if your daughter was just born and everybody gets their wake up call sooner or later. Either you get it in your 20s. You get it in your 40s and 50s, which a lot of people do. Like I got I was let go and I was 37, 38 years old for my job. Yep. And it was I looked at it as a blessing because that told me I needed to reinvent myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could talk to you for hours, man, but we're just about out of time here. Oh, so yeah, we got to do it maybe, again. <laughs> we got to do it again. This is like crazy fun. Yeah, this is a uh, motivational speech, huh? <laughs> that's it. Let's talk about your books before we leave, though. You got yes. uh, two books out there, Risk sure. Factors and Business Models and entrepreneur, uh, Entrepreneurship and Risk, Sure. Uh, which is available on Amazon, I assume. Yeah, my book is available on Amazon.com and uh my book is a wake up call. Every entrepreneur should have my book and my book try, will try to help you be successful by giving you the good, the bad, the ugly, the risks that involve us starting a business and how to avoid those risks. My, you can reach me on uh, my website, you know, mdicorpventures.com. I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, how do you get away with murder mm-hmm. and marketing and the other one's forensic marketing? Oh my God. You saw that, huh? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sitting here going... <laughs> Where the, where's the book, man? I want the book. Yeah, yeah we should, I will definitely see your autographed copy, David. Well, uh, the book should be out in uh, April or May. We're still finishing it up. All right, man. And I will personally send you a send you a, a hard copy with my autograph and things on it. I'm just blessed that you have me on your show today. I think that that'll be a great, great topic the next time I come on the show, I'll talk about how to get away with murder and marketing. For Absolutely. Marketing. And we will definitely do that. Thank you so much, Dr. D. Anthony Miles, our guest today on your 20-minute podcast and be sure to like us on facebook at facebook.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast dr miles it's been a treat man have a good week thank you i've enjoyed it so much talk to you later all right bye-bye until next time don't forget to download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast that's audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast for your free audiobook and thanks for listening to your 20-minute podcast with david brower